Okay, so in this video we want to look at a vector valued function which represents a curve in space. That space may be two dimensional, three dimensional, or n dimensional. We'll do this fairly generally. And we want to find the arc length as that curve takes on values of a parameter between a and b. And what we'll end up proving is that if the vector valued function r is nice, in other words we can take derivatives and antiderivatives um, however we want, then the arc length is given by this integral from a to b of um, the magnitude of r prime. Okay, good. So uh, let's look at the proof. We'll start with a little sketch of what's going on. So let's say our curve is doing the following. So let's say this is the curve r of t. And let's say over here is the point R of A, and over here is the point R of B. Good. So what we want to do first is approximate the arc length by uh, the simplest way possible. In other words, finding the length of some straight lines. So in other words, we will partition the interval from a to b as follows. So let's take a to be equal to t naught, which is less than t1, which is less than t2, all the way up to tn minus 1, which is less than tn, which is equal to b. And what we'll do is we'll set delta t equal to b minus a over n. And now notice that's also equal to t of i plus 1 minus t of i. So in other words, we've taken the, the interval from a to b and we've partitioned it into n equal parts. Good. And so what we can do here is put little hatch marks on here. So this is uh, representing the R of T n. So now right here would be the point which is R of T n minus 1. Maybe right here is the point which is R of T n minus 2 and so on and so forth. And maybe right here would be the point which is R of T1. Right here would be the point R of T2. Um, again, and so on and so forth in that direction. So now what I want to look at, at is an arbitrary point along this. And I'll look at a point where it's very, very curved because that'll uh, make the picture a little bit better. And let's say right here is the point R of Ti. And then over here is the point R of Ti plus 1. Good. And now notice we can approximate the length of this arc right here by a line segment between these two points. And in fact, what we'll do is approximate the length of this entire curve by line segments between each of these points. Good. So in this direction we're going here, and then in this direction we're going here, and uh, so on and so forth. So I'm just drawing in a couple of the line segments because it'll get real messy really quick. Good. So now notice our length will be approximately equal to the sum of the lengths of these segments, right? So we've got this first segment here, this se second segment here, the third segment, and then here is the ith segment, the i plus first segment, then back here are the last two segments. So now we can write this sum of lengths of the segments in the following way. So this is going to be the sum i equals 0 to n minus 1. So I've indexed it that way. You could also index it from 1 to n, and things will just slightly change, but it's no big deal one way or the other. And now we need the length between this point and this point. And so that length can be found by finding the magnitude of this vector, r of ti plus 1, minus this vector, r of ti. So here we have, this is r of ti plus 1 minus r of ti. 
and we need the magnitude of that vector. Okay, so now that we've taken this picture down to this approximation, notice the actual length will be the limit of this. I'm gonna move this to the top and then we'll finish deriving this formula. Okay, so we finished on the last board with our approximate length was given by the sum i equals 0 to n minus 1 of r of t i plus 1 minus r of t i. So notice that's the length between those two uh, points on the curve. In other words, that's a little segment between two points on the curve, um, which we had in the picture before. But if this is the approximation, what we know from integral calculus, so calculus 2, is that the exact arc length is going to be given by this following limit. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of this approximation. So i equals 0 to n minus 1 of this r of t i plus 1 minus r of t i like that. Okay, so the next thing that we want to use is the mean value theorem. So use the MVT, so I'll let you look up the mean value theorem, um, but, and we haven't proven the mean value theorem for vector valued functions, but uh, there is a version of the mean value theorem for vector valued functions, which again, I'll let you guys look up. But what that sh tells us is that um, this R of TI plus one minus R of TI, the magnitude of this vector is going to be equal to ti plus 1 minus ti times the magnitude of the derivative of our curve or of the equation that defines our curve at some point ti star which is in the interval ti to ti plus 1. Good. So in other words, the mean value theorem in uh, just scalar uh, valued calculus says that the secant line equals the slope of the tangent line for some point between the endpoints for the secant line, and this is the version of that. So what that allows us to do is write this L as the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum i equals 0 to n minus 1, and now we'll relate will replace this difference and magnitude by the following, but we can simplify this a little bit. Notice that this is the same thing as delta t. So we get that this is r prime of ti star times delta t. But again, turning a limit of a sum into an integral via uh, standard methods from calculus 2 will arrive us at the final formula which we're looking for, which is uh, the magnitude of the derivative of r of t dt from a to b. So that is our length function. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at an example of this. Okay, so the example we want to look at is this one. So let's let our curve be defined by this vector valued function, cos t, sine t, t, and we're going from this starting point, 1, 0, 0, to this ending point, 1, 0, 2 pi. And so in general, if you're given a starting point and an ending point, you often need to find the value of the parameter, but in this case, it's easy because the third portion of all of these points is exactly the, the value of the parameter. So in other words, here we have t is in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so before we do the calculation, I want to look at what this uh, curve is. So we looked at this in a previous video, but just as a reminder. So what we have going on here is notice cosine t sine t, that parameterizes a circle. So if we have cosine t sine t comma zero, that's a circle on the xy plane. Cosine t sine t one would be a circle up here at the plane z equals one and so on and so forth. But what we get by putting t here is not a circle but a helix. So it's like a spring. So we can draw that in the following way. So we have a cylinder here. Great. And then what's going on is that uh, this is a curve which is like going up the outside of this cylinder in the following way.
So pardon the drawing, but what, what we're going on here is like it's going up the outside of the cylinder that way. So this point right here would be like the point one comma zero comma zero. So notice we're along the X axis. And this point up here would be one comma zero comma two pi. So notice we're right above our starting point, but we're at a height of two pi. Okay, great. So now the next thing we want to do is apply this formula that we just derived. So we have this length is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the magnitude of r prime. Okay, good. But now notice that's the same thing as the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of r prime dot with r prime. So I think this is maybe uh, one of the most useful formulas for the magnitude. You don't have to worry about like taking all the squares in the square root. You just dot a vector with itself and then take the square root. Okay, great. Now on the side up here, I want to calculate what r prime is. So notice that's going to give us minus sine of t, cosine t, comma zero. So we get that. So now if we take r prime dot r prime, so that's within the integral 0 to 2 pi, what do we get? Oh, sorry, this should be sine t cosine t comma 1. Great. So we're going to get minus sine times minus sine, so that's going to be sine squared t plus cosine times cosine, so that's cosine squared t plus 1 times 1, so that's just 1. So we get cosine squared plus sine squared plus 1. But we know that cosine squared and sine squared uh, add up to 1, so that just gives us the square root of 2. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of root 2 dt, but that's a fairly simple antiderivative to take, and that's going to give us uh, 2 pi times the square root of 2. And that's the length of this helix curve. Okay, so that's the end of this video.